Welcome to the Dave's World YouTube channel. If you'd like to learn more about Project Cruise Missile, just visit the Dave's World YouTube channel and check out the playlist Cruise Missile or Cruise Mods. You can learn about the project that I've been doing to this car from beginning to end. There have been quite a bit of modifications. Some of them you could pick up just in this little teaser. I appreciate you checking this video out and hopefully you stay tuned for some future footage. Yeah, this thing's a pain in the butt. Bruh. Yo, bruh. Bro, Dave? What are you doing here? Why is this video so long? Well, uh, this thing was a difficult job to do, and uh, there was a lot of difficult things that I had to handle in order to make this thing fit. And could I have made the video much shorter? Yes. But my videos usually are not videos just for clicks. I like to show everybody what they're in store for. And it's very important that I keep things in that they know uh, is going to be difficult. So that's why the video is longer. Well, that makes sense. That's why you all should watch to the end. Hi everybody, welcome to Dave's World. I appreciate you checking this video out. So about six months ago, I did two short throw shifters to this car. One short throw shifter was the over the top performance short throw, which is actually inside the car. And the other short throw shifter is called the Q shift. It's actually down here. Let me show you real quick. That red bracket that you see is actually a short throw shifter. What I wanted to do was I wanted to show you guys how to install this thing. It was very labor intensive. This one drove me crazy. I saved the footage for the right time to post it. I actually wasn't even gonna use the footage, but I had a lot of people asking me about what type of short throw shifter I have in the car and how to install it because they're having a nightmare too. And I wanted to actually uh, do a video showing what's involved with getting that on top of the transmission on the, uh, the actual, it's called the shift tower. I also wanted to give some updates. Uh, this Friday, I'm going to get some dyno runs done. I wanted to see what kind of horsepower this car is making. If you have not been following along on my channel, uh, you really don't know anything about the car, so let me show you a couple things. So the car currently has my oil catch can kit. This is a kit that you can get through me. It has a K&N cold air intake. The reason I have a K&N cold air intake instead of my DIY intake is I had a problem with the PVC system that was giving me an issue and I found a way to fix that problem. Also, I'm going to be doing a larger turbo uh, and I wanted the uh, most amount of air I could possibly get into the larger turbo. This is still a factory turbo. We're running my intercooler. This is the Dave's World intercooler. You can pick this up at davescustomparts.com. We're running my wastegate actuator. Uh, you can get this at the same website. And this is obviously the rest of my intercooler system. So there's a lot of modifications done to this car. What I plan on doing is taking the car to a shop to have it dyno to see what kind of horsepower we're making to the wheels. From the factory, this car makes about 100 to 125 horsepower. Uh, so I'm, as long as I see more than 125, I'm happy. I'd like to see maybe 180, 190 to the wheels. I don't know. Uh, I know a lot of people don't really understand wheel horsepower for crank horsepower. At the crank, this car makes about 150 from the factory. Uh, this car is probably making like 190 to 200 at the crank. I just really want to see what kind of wheel horsepower we have. Uh, for people who don't understand what that means, when the engine makes power, all that power has to travel through the transmission, through the differential, through the axles, through the rims and tires before it actually gets to the ground. So that's what we mean with wheel horsepower. Whatever you have at the engine, you don't have at the wheels. And I would really like to see what this car has. So thanks for tuning in. What I want to do is jump into the Q-Shift uh, install. Now that uh, video was filmed about six months ago, so there are a lot of modifications that are not on the car in the video. But it doesn't matter anyway because I want to show people who have a stock car that don't have all these modifications how to install this in a stock car. Uh, so hopefully you enjoy the video and if you have any feedback for me, let me know if you'll have this modification done to your car already. I'd love to hear your input on it. I know I love the modification, especially running uh, both uh, mods. Running the, uh, uh, the, the over the top performance shifter and the Q-Shift is a fantastic upgrade. I'm also running a uh, clutch delay valve delete, which I have another video coming out for that as well. Uh, so thanks again everybody and hopefully you enjoy. 
So before I forget, I wanted to add this to the beginning of the video. If you go to my website, davescustomparts.com or davescarstuff.com, it'll bring you to this website. On the right-hand side, if you go to the cruise parts, it will show you how to order. It will show you that my intercooler kit is now live. It will show you the wastegate, some information on the wastegate, the big brake kits. And then it will also show you some samples of the different types of brakes. I wanted to put this in the beginning of the video because if I don't tell you what's on the site or how to get this stuff, you'll never know. So I appreciate everything and hopefully you enjoy the video. Okay, so I'm pretty sure the transmission's in first gear. The first step is to put the transmission in neutral, so let me do that. Now the kit came with this five millimeter bolt, and it looks like I have to put that through here. I have to pull this up. Didn't expect that. Okay, so it shows in the instructions that I have to get something underneath the shifter cable head. Oh, there we go, it just popped right off, that's good. Oh, okay, that was easier than I thought, but a little bit of a pain in the butt. Okay, so this is what's known as a reverse Torx bit. It looks just like a Torx, but it's the opposite way. Instead of being inside the bolt, this wraps around the outside of the bolt. And this is an E12. I just have to get a ratchet for that. I don't know if there's one in the back. I would assume there is. I doubt with this much torque, they're gonna use one bolt to hold this down, but I guess we'll find out. Yes, there is one other bolt in the back, which of course needs to be grabbed by feel, which makes this very difficult. So I'm using this swivel extension and I'm going down the back of it. Okay, I'm on it by feel. But, where is that reverse switch? I wonder if it's straight down. Let me figure out where that is first. Yeah. Okay, so this is supposed to be the reverse switch. I think it is, because this just pushes in, letting you know you're in gear, perfect. Okay, now we can take out that bolt that's in the back. I had to go right here by feel with basically a foot long extension, and I'm going to be putting another extension on my ratchet to reach that one with a swivel to get to that bolt. Okay, the bolt's loose, and considering I keep dropping bolts, I'm pretty sure I should try and grab it now. There it is. You have to do this one by feel, unfortunately. Hopefully, if I pry up on the shift tower, it's going to move now. Okay, good. Okay, I had to stop the camera for a sec and go look at the instructions. They say to rotate this basically clockwise. The problem is, they don't tell you about these hoses above it, which are in the way. And it looks like cooling system, it actually looks like the thermostat housing. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I have to keep, there we go, wait a minute. I just have to keep rotating it, I guess. Okay. 
<sighs> okay, this is... Alright, there's the shifter. Hey guys, here we are on my bench. Sorry about the mess. I just got finished doing a big turbo swap on the 2003 Jetta. Uh, if you guys are interested in checking out that build series, I'll put a card up here in the corner uh, to the playlist of beginning to end on doing that install. In the meantime, let me clean up the bench a little bit and then we'll get started on doing the shifter. I'm pretty sure inside here is where the little roll pin goes. So I'm gonna try knocking that out or maybe drilling that out real quick. I don't know if this is how it's supposed to happen, but it does show in the instructions. Using a drill bit. I'm gonna try using a punch instead. It may be better, I have a, I have a vise, which is not in my garage. Maybe I'll run out there real quick and just put this in the vise. I think that's what I may have to do. Okay guys, so I wasn't filming this because I thought it would just take five minutes, but I've been at this for an hour. Where the bolt goes in and holds this thing in neutral, pretty much the hole snapped. Another part over here that holds this linkage broke. I have to keep hitting this thing so hard, it's just not budging. So now I'm using the torch. I'm getting it to move, and I wanted to show you guys what I've been doing to make this work. An hour later and the pin finally came out. You have to be careful when you're hammering it on aluminum, especially polished or uh, cast aluminum, because you can definitely snap it just like that. I didn't hit this. I kept hitting this and the torque snapped that. Okay, this thing will not budge and I don't wanna risk cracking this aluminum housing. So what I'm gonna try and do is drill through here and try and hammer this shift rod out of it. I'm hoping that will work. Fingers crossed. I'm hoping I could actually drill it too. It might be a little hard to center it because there's the part number on top. Okay, that's a way to do it. All right, here's the new piece. Oh man, hopefully this just pops in. All right, let me just try putting it on there instead of hammering it. Nope, that's not easy, and now it's wedged in. There's a problem if the pin doesn't line up. I'm doing it this way because I don't want to hammer this towards the aluminum and have it hit the aluminum and crack it, so I decided to just hit it in this way. And you definitely don't want to hit this part with a hammer. This is working, and actually I lined the pin up pretty good. Okay, we are back over in the big garage. Uh, this is a disaster. However, the job is almost completed. Luckily, we don't have a completely smashed shifter. What I'm going to do is, 
I'm gonna put some lubrication on the rod that goes through those bushings. It's slightly bent, but with the lubrication in there, it should help it hold up. There's also a pad and a lock for this thing. Here's the pad. What I wanna do is get this in place and see where the pad ends up. This seems like the correct spot. Seems like it's doing what it's supposed to actually, even though it's slightly bent. Uh, what I'm gonna do is put some lubrication in there as well. So I'm gonna pull this back out. Okay, so if you're like me and you broke this centering tool or the hole, be careful when you're putting this in that this doesn't fall out. It could potentially fall into the transmission. It could fall anywhere actually, so be careful. Okay, I put some tape around the whole thing. That way this won't fall out of there. So if I'm muscling this around, it won't be a problem, hopefully. All right. Well, that, uh, okay. That uh, went into place. I put the bolt into the socket. I'm gonna get it in the place and hopefully I can pull this off without getting in the way. And look at that, tape came off, bolt stayed. That's exactly what we needed. Okay, so if you didn't break the centering tool, it should probably stay in and then put the reverse switch in. Okay, I'm gonna sit here and put the cables back on real quick. They seem to just pop right on without an issue. I'm gonna take this neutral centering tool out. Uh, what I want to do is let me hop in the car real quick and test to make sure the shifter moves properly. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, but I upgraded my editing skills and uh, I wanted to try them out in this video. So I thought they were kind of fun. I was trying to be a little funny, uh, subtle. Some things were subtle, some things weren't, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So the upgrade I did to this car is gonna improve your shifting. It's gonna make the shifter feel nice and stiff. Uh, I've had it in the car for a couple months now and the, the upgrade is amazing. Uh, so I'm running the over the top performance shifter and I'm running the Q shift. Uh, the four, I believe it's called the 4HQ shift. Amazing upgrades. I, uh, I don't regret it. Uh, between the two of them, I think I spent about 350 bucks for both and it, it really upgraded the car. It makes it feel more like a performance uh, oriented transmission and less like an economy car transmission. Uh, it's really tightening it up. And other upgrades that I did to this car was um, I changed some of the, basically the stroke on the uh, clutch pedal. I have a different stroke length, which basically helps engagement. I also did a clutch delay valve delete or a CDV delete. Uh, that'll, that'll be footage that I'm gonna put on the channel a little bit later, I'm still editing all that stuff. Uh, but for right now, I wanted to get all my transmission stuff out on the channel. Also, I was able to get the car to the dyno. I'm not releasing any numbers until I actually put the video out that shows the horsepower numbers. What I'm doing is uh, I wanted to see where we are horsepower wise now with all the mods that I've done. And then what I want to do is uh, I have a large turbo going in.
Then I want to see what kind of horsepower the car makes after we put the big turbo. Uh, so I'm pretty excited. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the video series. And uh, if you ever need anything, just ask. Have a nice day, everyone.